Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to handle keyboard input in Commodore BASIC. We can do that in with three commands. One of them is only available on the plus four and the 128, but two of them are available on the C64. And I'm going to do this in preparation so that I can amend my little lottery program. So I'm going to show you two examples of how to integrate this. So the first command you may have heard of is called input. Input can either take a text string or a number from the keyboard and it even waits for the user to press return to do that. The advantage is that it's really easy to implement but the downside of course the trouble is that it's very ugly and it can't really be modified very well. So let's let's take a look at that one first. And it's great if you just want to get some numbers in and you don't want to worry too much about how this how this looks presented to the user. So one thing to remember about input is that you can't use it as a direct command. So if I type that in like this, input a string, then I'll get an illegal direct error. And only input and get those two commands do that. Actually get key also on the 128 or the plus four. So um, you have to use it in a program and the easiest way to do that is by just adding it to, uh, to something. I don't think I have anything in um, memory no so I'll start with line 10 and I'll say input a string and uh, that's all I do if I run that program then all I get is this question mark prompt and a blinking cursor and I can say whatever and as soon as I hit return that input is given to the program and ready for me to you know digest and do stuff with so uh, if I go and print a string out I've got whatever Instead of a string variable, I can also request a numeric variable. So in this case, even if I would type in a number 34, it'll still be a string value because that's what input does. But in the moment, in the moment I take that string away and run that program again, I can give it a number, or 42 perhaps, and uh, I can print that number out, print A, and that'll be 42. And I can use that in the arithmetic functions and all that. But the trouble, of course, with the input command is that if I run this again and I type in strings like whatever, I get an error message saying redo from start. And that means the program does not let me input that string it tells me there's an error redo from start doesn't really mean anything to the user so that's another bit of an ugly kind of thing there but what happens there in the background is that you can now do this again until you type in a number and until the program is satisfied so it's one of those things it's a little bit peculiar so now if you type in a numeric value then the program is happy but unless you don't do that you know the program is unhappy so the bad thing about input is that you can't really check the keyboard input right away. You have to take in the value, you have to kind of have the Commodore finish its thing and then you can evaluate what is it. Do you want to turn it into a string? Do you want to turn it into a, a numeric value or whatever? So that's input. And uh, oh yeah, sorry, input can also be used uh, together with a variable, I'm sorry, with a text output. So instead of just uh, saying input a variable here, I can say input uh, tell me a number. And then I can use the semicolon sign and use a string, for example. And if I run this now, then this string is being printed out and then my number is requested. So that can get rid of a bit of the ugliness. That's a one way of dealing with it. Or you can prefix it with another print statement and so forth. So that is, you know, one of those things I'll let you explore on your own. The second command that deals with getting input from the keyboard is the get command. And get, much like input, can also not be used in a direct way. So I have to use it in a program. And since our program only has one line, I don't have to really type new. I can just type the, lum the, the line number and say get a string. And uh, here's what happens though when I run this program now. Nothing happened. It's as if the program's just ended. So has, has a string been gotten from the keyboard? What's going on? So if I print a string out, nothing's there. So what's happened there? Well. The computer was waiting for a keyboard input, but it happened so fast that it wasn't hanging around. It wasn't, it didn't pause the program like the input command did. So get only really 
rushes through it if there happens to be a key that's been pressed and if it's hap if it happens to be in the keyboard buffer it gets read out and you can react to it but the program just carries on and that can be very helpful in certain instances now on one hand you can design your own input routine that way to do it character by character so you can wait until one character has been read in from the keyboard and then get another one, get another one, and so forth. You can evaluate them on the go. That's quite nice. But we may want to have the program pause and, and wait for me to press a key rather than just rush on. And, and you know, so there is a way to do that. And uh, the, that is usually happening on the same line. I'll do it on the second line. If a string is nothing, then go to 10. And now if we do that, now the computer waits for me and uh, waits for a single character that I put in. So for example, I don't know, number five, and then the program finishes. So now if I go print a string, I get the number five, which is great. So uh, that's a way to make the computer kind of wait for keyboard input. And then of course, at the end of that, if there is no keyboard input, then go back to line 10. But then in line 30, I can say, if a string is y for yes, then do this. Or if a string is n, then do this. So that's a kind of a good way of waiting for a keystroke to kick off a menu or something. So present a menu to the user with, I don't know, five or six choices. And then you evaluate literally right here in the next line. If a string is, I don't know, the function key F1 or even if it's just the number two or something, then do X, Y, and Z. So that's the idea behind uh, using get like that. If you're the lucky owner of a plus four or 128, then there is a related command to get, and that is called get key. And here's the plus four. Almost, it's also get key also is one of those programs that cannot be used directly it'll be the, the same error message the illegal direct error but you can use it in a program much like we use the get command so i can say get key a string and if i do that and run the program now you see the computer is waiting for me again and if i press a key like the y then the program stops so i can go print a string and there's my y so get key is the same as the command that we've just looked at if a string is nothing then go back to 10. so the one liner that that i told you about is get a string and then there's a colon there we go get a string if a string is nothing then 10. so that's the one liner that's basically the same as saying get key a string on the 128 and the plus four and with that said i'm going to amend my little lottery program with both the get and the input command so i'm going to go back to that and ask the user to supply six numbers six lucky numbers which we can then compare to each random draw and i will also add some statistics functionality there so that if these draws are happening and i don't want to interrupt them but i do want to have a look at how many times have and has a number been matched that's when i'm going to use the get command so uh, I'll, I'll let the user press uh, command on the keyboard while the program continuously does stuff and if a certain key has been pressed then a little menu is printed out and then upon another keystroke the program will continue drawing lucky lottery numbers so if you're interested in that and if you've been following along with the videos that i've been posting here over the last few days then stick around for that if you like this video of course then please share it with friends family and total strangers and don't forget to subscribe to my channel i hope you found this entertaining and you're having a lovely time with commodore basic i will see you soon take care bye bye